This video will be less technical and just cover projects and companies that you may find interesting to give you a better idea of what's going on in the field. So let's get into it. One project that some college students worked on was the stability of micro aerial vehicles. Basically they wanted to build aerial vehicles kind of like small quadcopters that could operate in cluttered areas and were easily susceptible to external forces. For example, they put the vehicle in flight and provided a strong gust of air in which the aerial vehicle was able to stabilize and recover without going far off track. Working on small drones and quadcopters, by the way, is very popular, especially in terms of college projects. There are also a lot of projects involved in quadruped robots, or robots that resemble four-legged animals. You'll find many projects on designing these robots to be very versatile, such as making it able to climb stairs, or so that if you, let's say, pushed it, it could easily recover and not fall over. MIT even worked on a robotic cheetah a few years back and successfully made it the first four-legged robot to run and jump over an obstacle autonomously. Yes, it is easy for humans and many animals to jump, but remember to make a robot do this is no easy task. You need everything to happen just right. You have to account for balance of the structure so it doesn't just fall over while in motion. You have to deal with the impact when it lands because you don't want your entire project to just break from impact. Maybe you want to absorb energy while landing like a human would do. The legs also have to push off the ground at just the right time to leap over the hurdle, which has to do with sensing and sending signals to the mechanical equipment, and much more. Moving on, Stanford has done projects working on climbing robots. They worked on robots that could navigate a rock climbing course all by themselves. However, there has been a lot of research to design technologies that can enable robotic free climbing, as in only using natural features of the terrain rather than a rock climbing wall where the pegs are built in to make it possible. JPL has worked on this and developed ways for robots to basically grip rocks by making the most of their uneven surfaces. Then sense and avoid projects are also very popular in robotics. For example, many schools have worked on sense and avoid UAVs. The team might be given some small aerial vehicles and requirements and then have to create the sense and avoid system. They might use sensors to tell the UAV if something is in the way, and then usually the computer engineers or scientists would have to design the algorithms that actually tell the UAV how to avoid the obstacle based on the inputs it receives. Like should it go to the right, to the left, how far should it go to avoid the obstacle, and so on. All of these need to be programmed precisely. Some mechanical engineers did a senior project where they designed a prosthetic hand, where they had to make sure the hand and individual fingers could support a certain amount of weight, they had to make sure there was sufficient wrist movement, and that it was able to grip objects easily without applying too much or too little force. Now there are many companies that work in robotics because like I said it's a broad field. You could work for defense companies like Lockheed Martin or Raytheon as an example, but there are so many out there. Epson Robots is a company that designs robots for manufacturing that do precise movements. If you want to work on the robots that help assemble various products we all know of with extreme precision, this is a company you could work for. Universal Robotics is also a company that makes robots for manufacturing purposes, such as assembly, inspection, polishing, welding, and more. Liquid Robotics is a company owned by Boeing that provides surveillance of threats out in the ocean through the use of unmanned systems. Or they have projects where they use sensors to provide information on when tsunamis might occur and communicate that with a satellite which communicates back to the location where there's danger. Intuitive Surgical designs robotic assisted technologies to help surgeons perform open surgery in a more efficient manner and perform more complex operations easily. Exobionics designs wearable exoskeletons for stroke and spinal cord injury rehabilitation. Besides being just a physical support, it also has electrical components like a controller that can adjust various settings when a patient is walking versus trying to sit down. Then it also has more software components such as tracking measurements from patients over time to analyze improvements in their mobility. Stone Aerospace has designed a cryobot or robotic vehicle for ice penetration which will search for life beneath Antarctica. The vehicle will be automated and conduct reconnaissance, life search, and sample collections. I'm sure many engineers and scientists had to work on this to not only deal with the automation, but the cold temperatures, high pressure, underwater navigation, and more. They do much more than this, but I thought this was an interesting example, and I'm going to stop there. Now if you want to get into robotics and do projects, be sure to look at what kind of clubs or projects your school offers. Robotics is such a wide ranging field, so you don't need a PhD to get involved with projects. I mean even high schools have robotics clubs, so you can dive into it very early. So hopefully this gave you an idea of what a career in robotics might be like and what kind of projects you might be interested in. If you liked the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.